Uh, hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. <clears throat> I'm a cardiologist in York and a lot of people have asked me to do a video on the subject of right bundle branch block. So right bundle branch block is people is something that people get told when they have an ECG. So they go have an ECG. The doctor says, oh, you've got right bundle branch block. And then uh, and they, they say, oh, and that's nothing to worry about. And the poor patient then goes home and he doesn't know what it means and it causes considerable anxiety. Um, and a lot of people have written to me and said, can you do a video on right bundle branch block um, <clears throat> just so that we know, A, what it means, B, does it signify any risk to my health or to my life? Um, <clears throat> so I thought I'd do a quick video on this subject okay so to understand right bundle branch block you have to understand a little bit about the heart and it's very important um, to understand that right bundle branch block is an ecg pattern okay it is recognized on the ecg you cannot diagnose right bundle branch block just by talking to the patient it doesn't cause any specific symptoms that would make you think, oh, this person has right bundle branch block. It is purely an ECG pattern. You diagnose it on the ECG. And it is very different from a blockage of your heart arteries. All right. So let me talk you through this. You have your heart here. Okay. This is your heart. And these are your arteries, the red things here. All right. And this is your left coronary artery here. And this is your right coronary artery, all right? That, these are the heart arteries. They have nothing to do with the bundles, okay? When we're talking about right bundle branch block, we're not talking about these arteries. What we're talking about is a series of, is an electrical wiring that goes down here. So basically what happens is, generally you, everyone has an area of the heart, which is called the pacemaker, okay? Just around about that. And the pacemaker will fire, and the impulses from the pacemaker will go down here and then go around here on both sides of the ventricles, the important pumping chambers of the heart. And as they go there, they will cause contraction. And the idea is that as these impulses go down, they go down <clears throat> in a similar fashion and they cause a um, uh, an efficient contraction. So the uh, contraction is well timed so that both chambers contract at the same time. All right. Um, and these, this wiring, which you cannot see, you cannot see, it just exists, is called the bundle. Okay. This is called the bundle of hiss. Okay. So there's a complex wire that goes down here. Okay. Metaphorically wire, but it's just a series of cells which are very. Um, electrically active, and they will transmit the impulse down here. This is called the bundle of Hess. Now, once you go down here, the bundle has to divide, and it divides to the right, okay, covering the right ventricle, and to the left, covering the left ventricle, okay? So when we're talking about right bundle branch block, we're saying that this wiring, which causes contraction of the right side, is either delayed or blocked. That's okay. It doesn't mean that not, if even if it blocks, that is not a that's not a terrible thing because what can happen or what does normally happen is that the impulses go down here and then they get transmitted through the septum to the right side. So you're not entirely reliant on this bundle. You will still get contraction of this side even if the bundle is blocked here. Uh, but what it does mean is that when you look at the ECG, and most people recognize where the ventricle is uh, because there is a spike. Uh, if the spike is widened and has a particular pattern, then that tells you that the electrical activation is delayed. All right. So this side has gone first, and then through the septum, you get this activation on this side, but it's not going down here. Okay. And when you have that pattern where the QRS or the, the spiky bit is um, uh, uh, widened in a particular pattern, that is what is called right bundle branch block. It can be completely asymptomatic. As I say, it is a diagnosis that is made on the ECG. So you have to ask yourself, is it important? Okay. Well, it can be because it can signify underlying disease. 
Uh, and predominantly, you have to remember that there is a fundamental difference between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. The right ventricle is very thin-walled. Can you see how little muscle there is here? And look at the left ventricle. The left ventricle is very thick-walled, all right? So the left bundle lies under a lot of muscle, whereas the right bundle doesn't lie under a lot of muscle. It's relatively superficial. And therefore, anything that affects the right ventricle can cause right ventricle right bundle branch block it can affect the right um, right bundle okay so the right bundle branch can be affected much easier than the left bundle because the left is hidden away under a long a large layer of muscle so clearly there must be a more significant process going on to cause the left bundle to block uh, as opposed to the right bundle and a lot of times even if you do things like angiograms you can stimulate right bundle branch block simply because the right bundle is so close to the surface that anything that's going on can affect the right bundle okay it's important to bear in mind that um, a right bundle branch block um, a is um, very common Two, its incidence increases with age. So as you get older, you will get there's a higher chance of right bundle branch block. And almost 11% um, of people who are above the age of 80 will have right bundle branch block. Okay, And that does not necessarily signify that they have a harmful medical condition. They just developed this because of wear and tear. Um, now, the important things to try and work out is whilst it is it can be a completely normal thing it can be a benign thing which requires no treatment there are certain conditions that can make you prone to developing right bundle branch block and those conditions could be something dangerous the right bundle branch block itself is not dangerous but it can help you pick up certain things um, which may in themselves be dangerous okay but as i say it can equally well be just a normal finding for you and may not signify any other underlying condition. But really, anything that affects the right ventricle, all right, will affect, uh, will cause right bundle branch block. So the first thing you have to understand is what are the kind of things that cause, affect the right bundle branch block, uh, affect the right ventricle. The right ventricle pumps blood through this artery, this, the, through this artery, called um, uh, here this blue vessel here okay it's blue because it is pumping uh, deoxygenated blood okay the right ventricle pumps all this blood which is not rich in oxygen to the lungs okay and that's why it looks blue and it does through this through this valve called the pulmonary valve here so anything that makes it harder for the right ventricle to pump blood to the lungs could cause right bundle branch block. That could include pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary regurgitation. So I, if there's a problem with this valve, if it is too tight, okay, which can sometimes happen, particularly um, you can be born with it. That's called pulmonary stenosis when this valve is too tight or pulmonary regurgitation when this valve is too leaky. That can cause um, um, extra work for the right ventricle to do and that can then affect this bundle and cause right bundle branch block, all right? How? Because if the valve is too tight, the right ventricle has to work much harder to get the blood out. If the valve is too leaky, then the ventricle pumps, pushes blood out, and the whole ton leaks back in, putting more pressure on the right ventricle and causing it to gradually get bigger and bigger, and that'll cause right bundle branch block. So anything with the pulmonary valve can do it. If you have a problem with the pulmonary artery, that can do it. Remember, if, you have, if you're going to the lungs and you have bad lungs, so by far one of the commonest reasons people get right bundle branch block is if they have lung disease, particularly emphysema, particularly COPD. It, if you have bad lungs, it becomes much more difficult for the heart to pump blood into the bad lungs, and that will cause more pressure on the right ventricle and that will cause right bundle branch block. Similarly, if you can see here, there is a valve here called the tricuspid valve. And again, if the tricuspid valve is very leaky, then what happens is the right ventricle pumps blood, it tries to pump blood here, but some of it leaks back here. And therefore, the next lot of blood that comes in, because the kidneys try and equalize the amount of blood there is, will be more. And therefore, gradually, this will get um, a bigger and bigger. Uh, it will become more dilated, and that will cause right bundle branch block. 
Another thing that can cause right bundle branch block, which is very interesting, is if you have a hole in the heart, particularly a hole called an ASD. If you have an ASD, then what can happen sometimes is you have this hole in the heart, and because of that, some of the blood which would ordinarily go down the left heart goes to the right heart, and the right ventricle gets exposed to more blood than expected, and therefore will start dilating. And that's a typical sign, you know, when, when uh, you're worried about a hole in the heart called an atrial septal defect, you look for right bundle branch block on the ECG, okay? Um, what else can you have? Sometimes if you have an extensive heart attack, or death of this muscle, that will cause the right bundle branch block. If you have an infection, so um, myocarditis, that can cause right bundle branch block. Um, and those are the kind of things. Um, the only other thing, the only other thing I'd like to just mention is some people get something called right bundle branch block. And then if you look at the axis on the ECG, um, the axis may be described as being leftward, which means that one of the bundles here there is also blocked. So Basically, what that tells you is that you've blocked this, and one of the small one of the bundles, a branch of the left bundle branch block, is also blocked. So you're really hanging on with one bundle. What happens if that bundle blocks off? The heart becomes uncomfortably slow because it's no longer getting any impulses from the top. Okay, the heart will start generating its own impulses from the bottom, but those impulses will be much slower, and therefore. There's a propensity to, for people to feel dizzy. There's a propensity to, for people to black out or get, go vacant. So if I get a patient who says, I was standing there and suddenly blacked out without warning, injured myself, got up and I was fine, and I look at their ECG and I see right bundle branch block, and if I see a leftward axis, um, then uh, I think to myself, oh, maybe they're just hanging on by this one little bundle here, branch bundle, and therefore, it's probably worth putting in a pacemaker to try and allow those areas to get the electricity that they deserve and therefore prevent the heart from beating too slowly, leading to, be, leading to collapse or blackouts. So that is, but as I say, if you are found to have right bundle branch block, please don't panic, all right? If you're young and otherwise completely well and asymptomatic, in all likelihood, the right bundle branch block does not signify anything at all. However, if you had bad lungs, that's the most likely thing. If you were born with a heart problem, then it's certainly worth having a look at um, getting an echocardiogram by your doctor to look at the right ventricle. Uh, and um, that's about it, really. I think that's all I needed to say about right bundle branch block. So, um thank you so much for listening please keep your comments coming uh just a little bit of uh, information about me this is me and this is my website and this is my facebook page so i really appreciate uh, all the great comments i really appreciate um, you sending me messages um and i really appreciate you subscribing and i hope to put out more videos as and when I get some time. So thank you so much.